Club. According to my research, this black dot at the center of the eye is called the pupil, and it is an opening through which light can enter the eye. And surrounding the pupil, there is a colored ring-shaped structure called the iris. The iris changes its size to control the amount of light entering the pupil. Not perfect explanation, Bobo. Let me tell you a fun fact. Our irises adjust the size of our pupils when it's bright and when it's dark. During daytime, for example, when there's too much light, our pupils will become smaller to reduce the amount of light entering the eye. On the other hand, during nighttime when it's dark, our pupils become bigger to let in more light so we can see better. The clear lens located behind the pupil acts like a camera lens by focusing light onto the retina at the back of the eye. The cornea, a clear window at the front of the eye, covers the iris and the pupil. It works together with the lens to focus incoming light. The retina receives light and converts it into signals, which are then sent to the brain via the optic nerve. The brain will interpret the signals and convert them into images. During the day, objects will reflect light. The light rays from the object first enter the eyes through the cornea at the front, then pass through the pupil to reach the lens. The lens bends the light and focuses it onto the retina at the back of the eye. The retina will convert the light rays into signals that are sent to the brain to be interpreted as an image. Inside the retina, millions of receptors are present to convert light into visual information. There are two main types of receptors, the cone cells and the rod cells. Cone cells work best when there is plenty of light and they help us produce color vision. Can you see the red, blue, and green cells there in the retina? Those are the cone cells. Oh yes, I see them. How about you, Chipsters? Oh, Shafin, how about the other cells without colors? Yes, those are the rod cells. Rod cells are highly sensitive to light and give us night vision. Another fun fact, we have a lot more rod cells than cone cells in our retina. Around 20 times more. Awesome. Mm. So if we want to create a superhuman robot that can distinguish many different colors, shall we just put lots of cone cells into our robot? And what happens if some of our cone cells are not working properly? Hmm. Good hypothesis. And another great question, Bobo. When our cone cells do not work properly, we might experience color blindness, which means we cannot distinguish certain types of colors. Surprisingly, males have a higher chance of having color blindness than females. Want to watch the full video? Sign up now and get started with your own free trial.